Yeah. Hello again, everybody. It's Brian Alley Walsh along with my special guest from WWL Radio, Christian Garrett. Christian, welcome, my friend. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. No, uh, good. It's uh, Saturday morning, or turning into Saturday afternoon out at Saints Camp, and we've just finished a 20-minute uh, uh, interview process with Greg Williams. This is our access to him on a Saturday. Unfortunately, it, it kind of our availability to Greg, uh, it makes last last Sunday's game moot, and this Sunday's game... It's all forward-looking. Yeah, it really is, uh, but uh, he's always an interesting... Uh, Interview. So, what would you take from from his comments today about the Steelers in general? Well, you know, he talked about the Steelers' offense and it's changed since Ben Roethlisberger came off the suspension, and you know, they're they're a lot more wide open opposed to some of the quarterbacks they had played in the past, the, the last couple of games, but rookie quarterbacks. And he, he found it. I found it interesting. They said last week. You know, the Browns did everything to make sure that Colt McCoy was not going to lose that game. Well, and I think this week you're going to see, you know, Ben Roethlisberger, hey, the game's going to almost be on his shoulders, so to speak, where he can, you know, go out there and open it. And the playbook's going to be wide open. He expects uh, the Steelers to have every play in the playbook uh, at their disposal, and he expects a wide open attack from, from the Steelers. Which, in, in, a, in a sense, I mean, it, it's kind of a, a two-edged sword here. It, it's certainly the Steelers' offense is a, is a highly uh, a potent, highly – skilled offense compared to some of the offenses that they've run across earlier this season, but it also allows them an opportunity perhaps to make some some takeaways that they haven't made. Uh, you know, when you consider in the first seven games, the defense is responsible for, I believe, six turnovers, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, that is certainly an uncharacteristic of Greg, Greg Williams' defense. But if they do go into the playbook deep, it, it certainly maybe will allow the Saints opportunities to, to get the ball. Yeah, because they're not going to have the handcuffs on, on the quarterback like you saw so many teams do this year because the Saints were so prolific at it last year, getting the ball out. So I think, you know, Ben Roethlisberger, they trust him. He's an experienced quarterback. He's won a Super Bowl twice, so they know he can make plays. But at the same time, with his ability to make plays, if it's wide open like that, comes a propensity to maybe make a mistake. Uh, and Greg Williams, is, is you know, when they're up, if they can get a 10-point lead on them, how much differently do they play? The Saints defense and how much more op opportunistic do they become? And then from a defensive standpoint, it looks like uh, they're certainly going to be without Tracy Porter. Uh, or, I'm sorry, Jabari Greer for sure. Tracy Porter is going to be a game time decision. I'd be surprised if he if he did play actually. So you're probably looking at Patrick Robinson and Malcolm Jenkins at corners, and maybe we're looking at a little bit more playing time for Darren Sharper. Uh, I would think so. I mean, and that's one of the things that Greg uh, talked about today is get, you know last week he played 13 snaps in different situations, the red zone and nickel defense, and you might see that increase. I wouldn't be surprised if you see Tracy Porter play in a similar role that Darren Sharper did mm -hmm. last year. If he's able to go, or not last week, I should say, if he's able to go, will he play 13, 15 snaps in a red zone and a nickel defense? So I, I, I don't know that I'm you know, so quick to rule that out, uh, that possibility out, but Darren Sharper, uh, certainly I think, you know, in the neighborhood of 20 to 25 plays, I yeah, would imagine. Yeah. Uh, you've got some in inside information on no. uh, being the sideline reporter for WWL Radio? Not at all. Not at all. Uh -huh. just, uh, it's just a hunch, just a yeah. guess. You see that little smile, <laughs> sports fans? That says just tells you something right now. But uh, uh, what, So what are you going to come dressed as uh, uh, in the broadcast tomorrow night? You. Oh, my God. I'm going to put yeah. on a beard. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to put on a beard and... I don't have the orange, I mean the uh, yellow and blue sneakers that you have. But I'll loan them I'll do, to you. Yeah, loan friend. them to me so I can be in full costume. All right. Yeah. All right. So for Christian Garrick, I'm Brian Alley Walsh. Please stay glued to our website the rest of today and into tomorrow, leading up to tomorrow night's game. For Brian Alley Walsh, Christian Garrick, WWL TV, or excuse me, TV Radio, excuse me, dot com. My special guest on a Saturday out at Saints Camp. Aloha, everyone. <laughs>